Hey Plant Fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is my jungle. And if you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I really genuinely appreciate you for still being here. So, I realized that I'm leaving for New York literally tomorrow. I don't know when you guys are going to see this video, but literally tomorrow. And I'm not going to be back until November. So, I needed to film my October favorites for you guys. And I was sitting here looking around the room and I was like, girl, don't pick all anthurium, even though I kind of want to. There are so many other plants in here that have really been thriving and that I've really been loving. If you guys caught my Hoya tour, there were a couple in there that I was just like, oh, you're actually looking really good. So there's definitely a good mix of stuff on the list today, but I do want to start with the two that you would have already seen if you did watch my Hoya tour, and if you haven't, I'll link it here. You should definitely go and check it out. I have well over 100 Hoya in my collection, and honestly, I'm probably going to be getting rid of some more and then bringing new ones in to replace them just to kind of like revamp the collection, so stay tuned for that because obviously I'm going to take you guys along with me. But in the process, I was showing you guys a couple of Dishidia as well, and I realized that this Dishidia Ovada is freaking stunning. Look at her. She sits in the windows that are literally right behind you guys, and she gets some really nice bright light pretty much all day. So these windows are very much southwest facing, sort of it's never exact so the light comes in it comes in on mostly an angle and like hits the wall if you guys caught that video then you know what i'm talking about so this one for a good portion of the later afternoon hours anything in the window there gets really nice and sun stressed including this dishidia so you could see what it looks like when it's green honestly even this is pretty sun stressed this is like in between when it gets a little blushing on the margins and such, but there is definitely some good examples in here still of what it looks like green. Still super cute when it's green, but honestly, when it starts to sun stress like that, it's just so good. And the new growth will come in kind of a more burgundy color, but the longer you leave it in the sun, the more red the leaves are gonna get. Look at these leaves up here. Are these not gorgeous? And it's got a ton of new growth. Crazy amounts of new growth going on. So, ooh, and a bloom. The Shidia blooms are so weird. So they are cousins with Hoya. So they do kind of like peduncle in a similar way. They get like kind of umbles and it's like a little cluster of flowers. So 10 out of 10 recommend adding some Dishidia to your collection if you don't have any. I think they're just as easy care as Hoya. They're just as much fun to grow as Hoya. They're in the same family. They're the only plants that I have that aren't aeroids besides like some cacti and succulents and such that I really, really love. So big fan. Don't know, I am not even gonna try and pronounce the name of the family that they're in, but I'll leave it on screen for you guys if you're curious what family Hoya and Dishidia do fall under because they're not aeroids and majority of the rest of our houseplants tend to be aeroids for the most part anyway. So super duper cute, Dishidia ovata. I had to put her on the list because first of all, she literally has grown so much for me since I got her. I got her a little bit before moving, so I've had her for, I don't know, maybe almost a year, not quite yet, but she was super short and she's grown a ton for me and she's just continuing to grow. So check back again in another six months and I'm sure this is gonna be even more beautiful and full and I'm just totally obsessed with it. So Dishidia ovata, AKA watermelon Dishidia, is number one on my list today for my favorite plants for the month of October in no specific order. Of course, like I said, I just wanted to show you this one and the next one first because they will be a little bit of repeats for anybody who already watched my Hoya tour, but there were a lot of plants 
There was a lot of plants in that video, so you might not remember them all. And number two on my list is one that we've definitely talked about quite a bit on this channel, mostly just because it's been a journey. I actually unboxed this with you guys when I got it, and it was just a cutting, and I've shown you the process of her growing because she's just a really beautiful plant, and we've discussed her ID before because it is an unidentified Hoya. We've speculated, we've we've compared, we've contrasted. I can leave that video if you guys miss it, if you want to check it out. So at this point, we just call her Hoya No ID. She might be some sort of Irina EPC type of situation. She definitely gives like similar vibes, but I don't know. She was sold to me as Svetlana. I thought it was Svetlana and then the seller actually reached out to me and apologized that the plants were mislabeled. So she doesn't know what it is exactly. The person she got it from mislabeled it and um, therefore I don't know, but it is sun stressing so beautifully and maybe one day it'll bloom for me and we can get a better ID on it because it is a little bit easier to ID Hoya once they bloom. So I just absolutely love her because her leaves are super cute and veiny and splashy, but then they've recently gotten sun stressed and I'm just even more obsessed. She's got this like sunsetty kind of vibe to her where she's getting some oranges and little hints of red. And it's just really super cute to see. This leaf kind of gets like hidden, I think, from the lights, but you could see a little bit of blushing on that one and I just honestly I don't feel like the camera does her justice she is giving fall vibes and she's like the perfect October plant I feel like her leaves match the leaves outside my window right now and I just really love her she's grown a ton for me since she was just a little cutting when I got her and she's got this new tendril that she recently spit out so I should probably repot her into something a little bit bigger. <laughs> she's just in this little cup but she's got really great roots so she could definitely do with something a little bit just slightly bigger just big enough that I can fit a trellis into the pot and get this one wrapped around it and hopefully growing even bigger and more beautiful. Imagine all full with leaves like this. Oh my gosh, you guys. So hopefully again, she will bloom for me sometime in the next few years and maybe we'll be able to identify her more specifically. So she looks very similar to a lot of other Hoya, but also different once you put them side by side. So again, if you're interested in that video, uh, definitely go and check it out because I show you a lot of other Hoya compared to her in the process. Okay fam, so number three on my list is one that I did discuss in a video recently where I talked about all of the long, skinny, daggery leaves in my collection that I love, because if you know me, you know I love a long, thin, daggery leaf, and I feel like the queen of those long, daggery, skinny, amazing leaves is the Anthurium pallidiflorum. I have been growing out very many strappy philodendron Anthurium in my day, and this one is my favorite. So I wanted to put it on the list today because I am just totally obsessed with this new leaf. It finally fully hardened off, and it's huge. It's literally like the length of my, it surpasses the length of my forearm, which is insane. And I don't know, we can measure it. I have measuring tape, let's measure it. That sounds like fun. Also don't judge that I have my pajama pants and my slippers on. <laughs> you don't see from the waist down when I film. Okay, let's see if I can get this. I could do it on this side so I can see it. I know it's more than 10 inches for sure. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below before I measure it, how long you think this leaf is. And she comes in at, I think just about a foot. Let me see. I gotta do this a little better here off camera. Ooh, longer than a foot, you guys. She's literally just past 13 inches. Let me try and show you. There we go. It doesn't wanna focus, but she's just a little bit past 13 inches. Wow. 
I am certainly going to up pot it. There's crazy roots in here. Crazy, crazy noodles going on in there. So she can definitely use an up pot and then her next leaves should be even bigger. I'm actually surprised that she even upsized as much as she did from this leaf to this leaf in this small pot. So I can only imagine how long the next one is gonna be now that I feel comfortable um, repotting it. She's already working on another leaf actually right here. So we shall see. Anthurium politiflorum. Her leaves are like mm, kind of like sub velvet. They're not super velvety, but they're definitely soft and matte. And I just love her. I love how skinny she is. I love how long, like she's just, imagine her with more of these leaves just hanging. I kind of want to put her on top of my fridge and like just let these hang over the side. But I also just really love looking at her on the shelves in here. So maybe, maybe I'll just get another one. <laughs> but Anthurium palatiflorum is number two on my list of favorites for the month of October because I've just been totally obsessed with this leaf and very, very excited about the potential for the future on this plant just personally. Like this is just a personal plant that I really, really love and look forward to continuing to grow. So stay tuned if you wanna watch me continue to take care of these babes and grow. I really wanna get better at doing like monthly updates on all my plants for you guys if that's something you would be interested in just so that we can keep track of these growth things together it's just it's exciting I don't know it's exciting for me I don't know if it's exciting for you guys I know that you love to share your growth updates with me as well so stay tuned come November I'm not exactly sure when in November I will be launching my discord server that is going to be open for everybody to join. You don't have to be a member and that way we can send each other plant pictures. Okay. Cause that's really the point, right? We just, I just want to see your plants. You guys get to see my plants. I want to see your plants. So palette of is number three on my list. You guys might be really surprised by number four. I certainly was, but honestly, I've been eyeballing this girl. And, and like I say in every video, that's how I try to choose the plants for this video every month is like, which ones have I really just, you know, been looking at, eyeballing, admiring, recognizing, hey, that plant looks really good. And one of those plants is actually an alocasia. And it's my favorite alocasia and it's like low-key one of my favorite plants in my collection and i'm glad that the second time around now i've been keeping her happy so the fact that she's growing and thriving is part of the reason why i put her on this list today and it is my alocasia heterophylla aka dragon's breath so again i love a long daggery leaf and this one is silver and it's got really really cool texture on the leaves i love that they start to lobe out as they get bigger look at those lobes oh my goodness those lobes she's got schmutz on her those lobes they're so good, you guys, and they get really long. This is not even close to how big and long these leaves can get. And can we just talk about how I'm keeping her alive in soil? Like, I'm just actually watering her. And that apparently is the trick to keeping your alocasia alive, is watering them. And they are really heavy feeders. So I've honestly just been treating her the same as my Anthurium because Anthurium are also thirsty and heavy feeders for the most part. So I think that giving them the more royal treatment along with my Anthurium has really been a game changer. I do have a couple of other alocasia in self-watering pots that have been doing really well for me too, but this one's in soil. This one's from the plant ward. Um, I got some inventory from them, <laughs> including some of these. So a couple of you out there in the world have this plant that you got from me as well. And I kept one for myself because I just really genuinely love this plant and I wanted to try again with it. And it's got two corms that it's growing, little babies in there that I'm going to separate eventually. But I do love how full she looks and she's working on a new leaf here. 
So hopefully this leaf is gonna be nice and big and long and beautiful and I just really love her. I love the veins, I love the color, I love the shape of the leaf. This plant really does check all the boxes for me in the like aesthetics that I usually go for in plants. I've just previously really struggled keeping alocasia happy because I tend to be a neglectful plant parent and I tend to be an underwaterer. But honestly, my Anthurium collection has really inspired me to just be more consistent and more on track with my watering routine, which I am going to share with you guys very soon as well. I just need to wait until I come back from New York because um, I just watered everything already, so I didn't film it. But there is that. So Alocasia heterophylla, aka Dragon's Breath, is number four on my list. And I bet that surprises you. It surprises me as well, but honestly, it shouldn't because of course I'm gonna be determined to keep something this beautiful alive in my collection. So outside of the plant room, I would probably kill it, but because it's in here with all of the anthurium, I think it's just been a lot easier for me to maintain. So I'm excited about it. Okay, so number five on my list today is one that you guys would have seen me find in Home Depot. It was insane. Like I, I just like was like not expecting to walk up into Home Depot and find these plants. So number five on my list is the Anthurium Doriaki. And would you believe, would you believe me that I paid $12 for it, $12.98? No sales tax in New Hampshire. $12.98 for this in Home Depot. So granted, all of her leaves when I got her were just like a little bit beat up. It was labeled Heart's Desire from Proven Winners in case you guys snagged one. Um, they all look slightly different, but they are Doriaki for the most part. I am going to do a deep dive into that as well because we talked about it on Palm Street in my last live and you guys said it was really helpful. The way that I explained the differences between them and how to understand a little bit more maybe of the nomenclature around just plants in general, but mostly anthurium and their names and what in the heck and bob they mean and how to know what you're even looking at, if that makes sense. So this is Doriaki. We know that it's Doriaki because of how round and cuppy she is. Look at that new leaf and see so cute she's so cute and I up potted her into this massive pot so hopefully these next few leaves are gonna be really nice for me but if you remember when I got her she had an inflow and she was working on pollen and I also just happened to have another plant here in this room that was working on an inflow that was in the receptive phase at the same exact time. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. And I rubbed the two inflows together and I said, let's see what happens. And this is what happened. We're making babies. So I'm going to give you guys a quick little peek at it. I haven't filmed the process because this is my first time but I definitely will film the process step by step next time because I feel like I have a little bit better of a handle on it and I'm not the type to get on here and tell you guys do this or do that when I still am learning myself. So you could see kind of those bumps on this inflow here that kind of look like pimples. If it'll focus, I gotta cover my face. There's still some pollen on it, but you could see those bumps are what we call berries <laughs> in the plant world for whatever reason they're called berries i'm not sure if that's even like a scientific term they look like pimples and when they get to the point where they look like they're ready to pop they will you can either pull them out gently or it looks like this one's gonna pop very very soon or they'll fall out on their own which is part of why we have this little bag over it um, and inside each berry is one to two seeds. So then we pot up those seeds and we will have a baby. So this is my forgetty eye. Honorable mention today is my forgetty eye and her future babies. The father is the Doriaki. So I think these are gonna be really cute crossed with each other because they're very round. They're both known 
to be a very round species of cultivar rather and species of anthurium so i think it's gonna be super cute hopefully we're gonna get really nice round maybe a fused sinus but with some some more pronounced silver veining than the forgetty eye tends to have so stay tuned for that it's gonna be a long time before they grow out but i'm still really excited and i would love for my first batch of babies to go to like my plant fam you know so if you're interested in one i want to make sure that you get one so when they're ready i'll let you know and you guys can uh, hit me up on palm street if you want one so forgetty eye is honorable mention on the list today because she's gonna be a mama my first official Jacqueline's Jungle Cross. So I'm really excited about the future and I'm really excited about these plants. So I did want to show them to you today, but also just because look at how pretty this new leaf is. I hope it's going to be really big. Doriaki, if you can find yourself, because they're all slightly different because it is a cultivar. Keep that in mind. If you could try to find yourself a real nice round one like this, you definitely should because I have another one actually you can kind of see it in the in the corner back here is also a doriaki. Um, it's still rounded for sure, but it's not as round and cuppy as this one. So 10 out of 10 recommend her. And if you did snag one from proven winners and it was labeled heart's desire, feel free to relabel it as doriaki because that's what it actually is. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know which your favorite was on my list today. What are your favorites for the month of October? Did you get anything new? Honestly, none of these are new. That might be a first, actually, because I have a whole bathtub full of brand new Anthurium. <laughs> and I didn't put any of them on the list yet, but wow, I, I think that might be a first go me. Anyway, <laughs> I'd love to hear all about your favorites for the month of October. And I hope that you guys all have a really happy and fun and safe Halloween wherever you are out there in the world. Don't forget to spread kindness. Don't forget to stay hydrated, fam. And I hope I see you in the next one. Oh, and if you watch this whole video, leave me emojis, Halloween emojis, spooky stuff. It's almost Halloween. I'm really excited. So I love you guys and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.